Welcome back to Tight Liney, Maryland. We are out fishing a freestone stream out in the mountains. Uh, it is really, really beautiful out today. Start off a little chilly. It was probably about 38 when I pulled in, uh, but today's gonna be around 60, although I won't get to fish anywhere near that because I only have about two and a half hours to fish. Um, you know, the goal is just to pick up a couple uh, fish here in this little stream. The great part about these freestones, which I'll just show you real quick what we're working with, The great part about this stream, or really any freestone in general, is gonna be that these bugs in mid-April are just getting ready to hit their peak. Um, you're gonna start seeing caddis, mayflies, bugs overall, they are gonna be popping really, really soon. So these fish are, although they're not feeding a lot on top, they are for sure uh, keying into nymphs and uh, you know, occasionally you'll get one looking up. But uh, the freestones can yield a lot of beautiful trout a lot of times because they're in these pristine waters in the most gorgeous situations that you're gonna find yourself in. Uh, they just tend to be a little bit more pretty. So hopefully we can get a couple on film for you today and uh, showcase how we're gonna do it. So let's get started with fishing and thank you as always for tuning back in. Alrighty, we're gonna get started here on this first hole. Um, I just want to show you something to consider in terms of like, you know, how are we gonna select the pockets we fish and what are we looking for? Right now, the, the area I'm standing on is the far side of the stream that I wanna fish. I wanna be over here and I'll show you why. If you look down, uh, and, and hopefully you can see it without any obstructions, but you know, if, if you see my feet, I really, uh, I'm only about ankle deep in this water. And that's been the case throughout pretty much this entire freestone. There are some buckets that get to about shin, maybe even knee deep. Um, and that's what we're looking for. So with that said, I've got this huge rock right here, this boulder right in the middle of the stream. It splits the current into two, and on the near side, it's really not that deep. But on the far side, instead of it being ankle deep, that's what I'm talking about. It's gonna get you into shin deep, um, and because you've got a little bit of structure back here, you might have some fish holding. You've got the rock that they can hide under. You've got the deeper water that's just feeding in uh, you know, different nymphs and things that these fish are gonna be keyed into. So that's where we're gonna start today. We're gonna make our, our first couple drifts in here and see what we can. So the setup for today, just so you can see it, is gonna be our uh, 10 foot three weight uh, syndicate. It's a P2 pipeline. On there, I've got a Lampson Liquid four five weight reel that's treated me very, very well. Um, and then we've got our Euro um, leader that again, I would imagine by now you've seen that video, but as usual, I'll link it up in the top. And today we've got on probably a little bit too much tippet. Uh, we've got on probably about four and a half feet to our first fly. You don't need that much in a small stream. Can you compensate for it? Yes, there are ways to still fish a rig with a little bit too much or too little tippet. It doesn't have to be perfect, but right now we've got about four and a half feet to our, our point fly, uh, or excuse me, to our tag fly, which is a Frenchie. And then about another foot to foot and a half below that, we've got a pink beaded hare's ear. And uh, that, that probably totals us out to be about five to five and a a half feet below our uh, cider. So with that said, we're gonna get started here. We're gonna make a couple drifts into this, this prime little run and hopefully put a couple fish uh, in the basket for us today and maybe one right in here. Well, there we go. Picked him up right there at the head of that run. Stay out of that rock, bud. There we go. Get you out of there. Ugh. Pretty little guy and he's in the net. I tell you what, man, you can't beat 
some of these freestone brownies. They just get beautiful. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Let's get this hook out of them real quick. That's gone. Just sitting up in the head of that run. Just ready to feast. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Getting fat too. Alrighty, so we're gonna get this nice healthy, probably eight or nine inch brownie back. Let's probably shoot right back into his hole. So we're coming up on another nice little run. Got a little bit of feeder current taken into this undercut. So therefore, you know, a good place for, you know, a, a modest brown trout to hang out. You know, this stream, even though it's a, a pretty high density brown, tr brown trout stream, it's not going to host many, many large fish. So, I mean, even if you're getting anything in the 8 to 10 inch class, you got to be happy with the results. So we'll see if we can't prove the theory right about something being right there in that uh, that particular undercut. We're gonna take about three drifts into this spot. You know, one thing I'll say is that as you're fishing these fr freestone streams, you know, I'm only taking maybe three to five drifts. There he is. Um, three to five drifts in a given section. I mean, I'm not really, I'm not really gonna sit here and and fish it for a lot of uh a lot of drifts i mean three to five i think is the sweet spot and at that point you're probably overfishing it and wasting time so you are going to hunt kind of some of the better spots so here's this little brownie nothing special we were hoping for a little bit more of an adult but one day he's going to grow up there he goes so he's going to be our third fish today and um you know, just using two very simple basic patterns, a pink beaded hare's ear and a Frenchie fly. You know, nothing that requires a lot of, you know, perfection when you tie it. And, um, you know, something that's super simple for the fish to find and super simple for the tire to create. All right, so we're up on another spot that's really a prime lie. Uh, we talked about how we're looking for deeper water and and this gives us exactly that so we're gonna crouch down we're gonna try to approach this very stealth like and try to see if we can't get a good drift in this little hole there we go We go got him oh, and he's in the net all right so that's our second fish out of this particular hole um, it should have held multiple fish so I can't say I'm surprised you know we're on a again a high density stream that that spot is by far the deepest I've seen today so it's good to good to get one right there technically too so the other one we got a while back and this time around, we, we came back and fished it about an hour later, and there's another one. Get this guy one more time. Just pretty little wild brownie. <clears throat> Let's get you back, bud.
There he is. There he is. That's a nice fish. He took the pink beaded hairs here. Oh. There we go. Got very lucky to have landed this guy. Another really just gorgeous fish. I mean, these fish are pristine. Look at his paddle boards. They're bright orange. So let's take a quick pick and get this guy back. All right. So again, just an absolute slab of perfection. Let's get him back. Got another one. Gorgeous fish, too. Stacked up in this little, little run. Come on, bud. There we go. Man, these fish, I tell you, they just don't get prettier than this. Again, that hook is already out, but ooh, look at that guy. He is fat and he is pretty. All right, so I think what the great part is about, you know, Euro nymphing and, and just kind of fishing this style is that it's so visual, but also tactile. So like I can see the take, I can feel the take. That line or that cider just kind of goes taut for a second and I know to set the hook. I mean, it is, it is just a thing of beauty. All right, so at this point, we've really fished this particular spot pretty hard. I mean, we knew that it would hold a fish or two and we definitely got two out of it but one thing i'll say is that that gets super deep i mean to the tune of probably three feet it would be my guess um i can't get down there right now with that kind of current speed um with these nymphs even though they are tungsten beaded so what i'm going to do is i'm going to throw in one of my little jig streamers and see if there's anything else just a little deeper than where we got our fish because we honestly we picked up ours on the the kind of just outside of it and then uh the inside part of this other feeding stream uh or the main stem so let me switch up to a jig streamer and see if that does anything and then we'll go back to this double nymph rig As soon as I put that in there, a brownie came up and whacked it. Oh. So the, the thought process was definitely right. There were more fish in there. Oh. I mean, just obliterated it. fish holy crap come on bud you do not want to lose a fish like this in a small stream Whoo! look at this fish this is a monster and he took the big, meaty presentation. That jig streamer paid off. Look at this fish. Oof. He is every bit of probably, I would say, if this is 18 inches, He's probably 13 inches for this tiny little stream. So catching big fish on big streams is great, but I think catching a gorgeous wild brown that comes in at 13 or 14 inches or so on a, a little stream, that's that's where the, the real gold is, pun intended. All right, so let's walk you through the play-by-play -play of what just happened here. We basically start off with double nymphs and we were able to pick up one on the outside part of this inside seam of, of the main stem and the feeder stream 
We got one nice one out of there. Uh, you know, just picked up the nymphs pretty instantly. Then we got another one right over here where kind of those, those two kind of converge right at its point. Then what I realized is, is I have not gotten down into that deeper water. So theoretically, the bigger fish and the ones that can kind of deal with some of that more, um, you know, turbulent current, they're going to be the ones that hunker down in that prime feeding lane. So I couldn't get down there with nymphs. So what we did is we switched up to a, uh, a black jig streamer and I didn't even change up the leader. I didn't change up the fact that we've got on X amount of tippet. Uh, I didn't even change out the fact we got a Frenchie on top. All I did was put on this black little jig streamer. And as soon as I threw that thing in, I had to take immediately with probably a seven or eight inch fish. And then finally, I put it right directly in the most, uh, you know, turbulent water, the fastest water that was dumping in. I let it drift right back to me. You can probably see there's this little white rock. To me, it almost looks like a big, you know, shark's tooth, which I know they don't get that big, but the point is like, it, it kind of stands out, this little white spot in the back. He was tucked up just on the inside of that rock so that he's got a cushion, but everything is being pushed down to him. So what a great fish for this small stream, catching one that's 13, 14 inches uh, and successfully landing it in a stream like this is just absolutely what you want to do. So I think that's going to wrap it up. Let's call it quits and uh, wrap up the video. That's going to wrap it up for Tight Lining Maryland. Thank you so much for tuning back in. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. Hopefully, if you stuck around this far, you learned something today. I appreciate all the support, and maybe the next time you hit the stream, you can use something that maybe I did in this video that might help you put another one in the basket. Thank you as always, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.